At this point, we've already learned that potential energy is the energy of position or stored energy. So, an object all by itself can never have potential energy. Recall that an object by itself can have kinetic energy, as long as it's moving, but to have potential energy, an object needs to be part of a system, where its position in that system provides it with this stored energy. Consider a bow and arrow. The arrow flying through the air has kinetic energy, but the arrow, all by itself, can never have potential energy. But if you put it onto a bow and pull it back, now you're causing the arrow to have stored energy within this system of bow and arrow. It now has potential energy. We can calculate the arrow's potential energy using the equation EP for potential energy equals F av or the average force applied to the arrow times D, the distance over which this force is applied. The force is in newtons and the distance is in meters. For example, if an arrow is pulled back 0.1 meters and held, and the average force it can apply on the arrow is 200 newtons, then the potential energy of the arrow is... Okay, well first, let's write down our equation to be used. In this case, EP equals F av, or average force, times D. Next, Replace the F av and D with brackets. The average force is 200 newtons and the distance is 0.1 meters. So we calculate that out and find we have a potential energy of 20 joules. Again, if we use standard units, newtons for force and meters for distance, we'll always get joules for our answer. The arrow has 20 joules of potential energy. Now let's take a look at this formula. It should look pretty familiar. In fact, it's the same formula that we used for work. So, we could ask what work was done in pulling the arrow back in the bow. And we'd use W equals F av times D, or 200 newtons times the distance of 0 0.1 meters, again, 20 joules. So, the same work that we did to this arrow as we pulled it back in the bow is now stored as potential energy. And it'll stay stored as potential energy as long as we keep the arrow in that position. Let's consider a block. In the same way, a block by itself can't have potential energy. But if you put that block next to a spring and push the spring back with it, it now has potential energy. You're causing the block to have stored energy in this system of block and spring. And the further you push the block back on the spring, the greater the potential energy. For example, if our block is pushed 20 centimeters into the spring, and the average force the spring can apply is 100 newtons, then the potential energy of the block is, well, first, let's write down our equation being used, EP equals FFD. And next, replace the FF and D with brackets. The average force is 100 newtons, and the distance is 20 centimeters but we need that in meters to come up with a result in joules, so we switch it to 0 0.2 meters. And now we can calculate. In this tutorial, we reminded ourselves that potential energy is the energy of position, or stored energy. The equation we use to calculate potential energy is EP equals F av times D. So, if we're ever asked to calculate the potential energy of an object, we can do so in four steps. We first write down the equation being used. 
EP equals FAV times D, but no plugging in numbers yet. Then we rewrite the equation, but replace the variables with brackets. Then we're ready to put the appropriate numbers into brackets, and we ensure that the values are in our standard units. And that way, we can calculate our answer. Making sure that we had the standard units ensures that our final answer is in joules.